That was the, the uh, landowner sign. As a subscriber, you want to have that that uh, secure link. Oh, that's still pretty small. Can you see that? You can see that okay? All right. So as a subscriber, you still want to have that secure login so that none of my information is confidential. You log in, it's your subscription area, and nobody else can actually access that information. I want to be able to reset my own password if I need to. Which you automatically send your email. Right, um, you reset. So that account maintenance, that, that part of it, you don't have to wait for business hours to mm -hmm. call someone at an ODF office. That, that you don't have to worry that we'll call you. Yeah. Well, well if it's not work. working, that's the other. <laughs> well, that you know, that's the part I think. I think a lot of this stuff. But how many times have you gone on an online system and then not had it work for you, or you had to submit something? So there can I'm be on government systems. No. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I on use systems shopping. like that all the time, and they're very effective and very efficient. Yeah, and they can be. So, but anyway, go ahead. I don't want to get into the. Sure. So. Uh, what do you we should, yeah, the manage? So manage my communication preferences. So email, snail mail, as we call it in, in the post office. How often do I want to receive those? Do I want to receive it every time I have something in there? Do I want a weekly or a monthly summary? You know, kind of what's going on. That's also that comes I pulled that from the landowner side. Mm -hmm. And we can change this if we need to. And so I don't get too many emails. I don't get my in inbox doesn't get inundated with every time something happens. On it. Um, and you, but you're still able to man manage your whole notification, your system subscriptions. So, for instance, we could get an email and somebody posts a comment. Exactly. Or when there's a response, right? Or you could wait till the end of the week or every third day or and the, or the end of the notification. So the question, so I think what Joe, so we've talked about the login, what are we missing, right? Or yeah, do you see anything missing from the login is from fine. simple? Login is fine, you should be able to reset it and it would send you an email. That way you know that somebody reset your password and hopefully they need. Yeah. Yeah, then, uh, yeah, I mean, when you go in and you change your password on the system, you receive an email saying your yeah. system password's been changed right. as if this was a you, and then you know, go ahead. And you can call Look. it. Right, right. I, there are, you know, systems where you have to reply to that email to confirm that it was you that changed Correct, yeah. And that's the best because that requires no. Then, then nobody's going to have to call up Peter in the middle of the night and say, Peter, I need a new password and that's that. Then he calls me. Right. Then I call him. That's the best. Mm -hmm. No, I, I just need two phone calls. Uh, <laughs> just so in lieu um, time check, uh, we, that we have the room to 2.30. Technically, yes. Technically. That includes um, clean up. Yeah. Clean up. So, you know, and I had, we had scheduled this meeting till 2, and I don't want to disrespect anybody's time, but I think I can disrespect my staff's time to say we can stay here. And continuing to 215, would that work? Would that work for you folks? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that okay? Good, that gives you a little bit more time, but sure. Um, so, um, I, I've got um, in the time that we've been just sitting here the last few minutes, I've been able to log on to the Water Resources Department for the very first time. There it is. Install the, install the software and come up with this system. It's a JS system online, and I would recommend you, you, without reinventing the wheel, that you start with this. That you go to Water Resources and start with this. Get on here. What area you're interested in? And Lisa or Gary should come do this because I've never done it before. But okay, I think that's yeah. the format. Yeah. That's the thing. Okay. First thing, this is in, in, is incredibly easy. It's already done. It um, will tell you exactly what you need to. When you say that, okay, so you get the, uh, We have actually internally, we have mm -hmm. a very good GIS system right. that gives us all of the information we need. So here's the, the difficulty the is building in the notification processing mm -hmm. and integrating that with a GIS system. That it's just if we had the two independent, mm -hmm. we just have what we have today. Right. 
It's two independent systems. It's merging those two together so you can actually pull that notification information out via a map. It's all live. Or be able to be in the notification system and go to it. Right. 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 And that's integrating those two things together it doesn't exist from the Department of Forestry. That's a, that's, you know, that's a public access yeah. system. Correct. But it's, it's not a notification processing and communication management tool. Because internally for us, the same system has to allow our stewardship foresters to do inspections, to uh, manage prioritization of everything. So it's if there's a workflow aspect to this tool that has to occur, and especially internally for us as a state agency, we have to be able to manage what we're going to inspect, and inspect, and prioritize what is being inspected because we just frankly don't inspect 100% of the operations out there. It's just physically impossible. So we have to be able to internally manage that. So it's a workflow product that we're looking at is, you know. Yeah, the product, and that's kind of a distinction. This isn't a sort of a user information or a landowner information system. This is a workflow tool for us. It's our system for being able to administer the Forest Practice Act. Now, part of the administration of that is providing information under the subscriber system. So we see that as a really important component. But the the, so just to make a clear distinction, uh, uh, again, the, we've got it down that we do want to have a public access system is a, would be something that you've said would be very desirable to have that tacks into our notification database. Right? And you're not looking at doing that now necessarily, like you haven't set up well, yeah, we, now? We're, you have that right now? Let me, let me just yeah. describe how this could work. <laughs> If, if you did have this, this mm -hmm. would be the same basic screen that you would get when the person is drawing the area where their unit is. Um, so you're already interfacing with the GIS that way. Um, but if, if, if it was like this, then for instance, you could receive an email as a subscriber that just point that just takes you to the area of the map where the notification is. And then you can, it'll have a notification number on the map, and you can double click it, and it will take you to the notification. Instead of sending email and the notification itself, it could just take you to the map. Absolutely, yeah. So that's one of the that's one of the things we need to talk about right. here is when we're when you receive. I guess how do you view your notifications? So so that'd be a good one to add to the manage my communication preference is yeah, you me. don't want, they don't want email the, or add in um, a link to the database. You're going to make this comment. <laughs> so, um, uh, 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 I've got to say too that, uh, you know, Thinking about it from a social communication point of view, the people living in the country, the deer leading to paranoia in uh, dealing with rumors of sprays, if we could have a actual information, would be the fear and paranoia would be mitigated a lot. They I'm not sure I understand your, your comments. Well, I think it's like, well, I'm just No, well, oh. the, well, to more specific, uh, in terms of... Well, like the, what Gary said, the same name. I heard at the grocery store oh. they're spraying tomorrow. If, if it wasn't all just rumor, but we had actual fact of here's where it's going to happen when, here's who's doing it, and, and real information, not just rumors. So to kind of extrapolate that on a larger scale. Yeah. One of the most frustrating parts from a forester, and Paul can probably back this up, is not knowing when exactly when an operation comes in. They'll notify that sometime between January 1st and December 31st, we're gonna go and log this. Yeah. So it's good for the entire year. It, we don't know, 
from a department's perspective, we don't know when they're out there, unless they call us and let us know. One of the requests and one part of the functionality we've had from the Department of Forestry side is if we add something in there that says this is now active, right. would, the, would the loggers, landowners, and timber owners actually communicate back to us? Yeah. And majority of them said, yeah, as long as you don't require it, sure. That, with, with, with regard to the uh, cutting and logging, their industries do that now. They, via email. Via email. And that's not all. Person. Not all do. Some do. And as a fraction of the total land ownership, it's not the majority. But you get a you get a little table of who's you know what notification number. Who the, you know and this it just summarizes notification number for a particular week of what's happening or not. And and that happens uh, now, but there's nothing that requires that it occur. Right. It's occurred. Right. Yeah, that, that functionality is what we're looking at having within here, so they can actually go in and start and click this one's active, this one's active, this one's active, and then it notifies us that these are active right. operations. Now, if this was a zero cost system, then one user story would mean I want to subscribe to Township and Range versus the sections. Um, and I would want to receive emails from new notifications that are filed in that township and range. Well, so that's uh, going to come to the subscription in the next uh, part. So one of the things, you're talking the area, right I was, uh, one of the things I put in there is time frame too. We so, I mean, mm -hmm. have it more than just a year. We can subscribe for longer periods of time. Yeah. You know, that was, that's a common comment I can back. So, um, so here it says, be able to find my subscription by legals, which is township range section, uh, or via map. Sure. And so do we, you probably from would, a, I think it would, I think you're both resolving it to township range and section is sufficient, or township and range or the. What if you wanted just to draw an area on the map? That, that is a township and range. Well, it's a, no, it wouldn't have to necessarily, it could be a geographic area that, is halfway. A watershed. Well, you could draw yeah. a watershed boundary, yeah. which wouldn't correspond. It this would have part of a township section. The polygon. Right. Yeah. So, what? There's yeah. one behind that. Yeah. Yeah. Subscribe to a polygon. I think, in general, you want to, I mean, if you could click on a section and say add this, so you go into this, at, define your notification area. You can click on a township, you can click on a section, you can click on a watershed. Well, and that's the thing we're getting at. Do you want it at a, do you want it, the, a logical way for organizing uh, ecological information is off of the watershed, not some legal description. Right. We're on the legal description historically. Do you want to be able to identify it by watershed or would you prefer, I'm not saying this is, right. this is you. I don't know if it's possible on a GIS system to delineate it. And just find a point and say, give me everything. Should. I don't know why. I don't know. Well, yeah. well, right here. well yeah. so uh, then, yeah, but secondly, the way we're sounds like we're talking about is that if we have a um, a polygon, we're going to intersect you to get something to find out whether it's a subscriber system, right? Correct. So yeah, that's the in theory. That's what we're. Doing. Yeah, and so I think you could intersect two polygons and see if they. Yeah. But if you, if you choose it. I think if you choose a watershed, then it just adds all those sections. Right. Right. It would be. It really is just a defining it's points just, within a within a GIS database, and then any time there's a, a notification that intersects you know those data points, then you the way it would work on the map is when you when your mouse moves across the border of the watershed, it would highlight, and if you click then, it would select all the sections within the watershed. So let me add uh, watershed to this. Yeah, that's what we're trying to get at. I mean, right now we're saying you go by section, township range section. If you want to do it by fifth order hop or, you know, something along that line, is that... Right, uh, those things don't change, so they can be resolved down to sections. It's just while you're selecting them. Mm -hmm. And historically the section has been the, 
the currency of trade at the subscription process because that's as resolute as they wanted to make it in the get in the, they didn't make a sixteenth section. They made a section. And that's just was a, you know, we're on paper and let's make it a section. So that's what they did. And the thing you describing could be a thousandth of a section if it in, went across the line into the polygon. Right. And so I think really are you asking, can we subscribe to a polygon? And then the polygon could equal a watershed, or it could equal a congressional district, or it could equal any kind of thing you wanted to. I think it would just automatically include all the sections yeah. that are. It would. Yeah. Well, now we're down into how it works. Let's just say, yeah. yeah so you get the idea. So yeah, yeah. So, so however, how like how you're thinking about. Paul mentioned clinical values, which I think are also which clinical values. So if I want to subscribe to Lane County, maybe I'm a Lane County Planning Commission, and I want to subscribe. It's all over the county. That's all I care so about. Political boundaries, uh, essentially some sort of defined polygon, some sort of defined area. And I think we have like urban growth boundaries as one of the subscription layers. Yeah. It's all whatever. It, in, uh, it's all whatever data we have and how yeah. we define it with the tax system. Lot. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's tax it may not be there now, but this is what we want is to hear what you would sure. like. Because most people don't get township range and section. Oh, you know, they need a lot more information. So, if, you know, if they can um, can look for, this is my home address. <laughs> so, one really of the, want. I just added a, kind of like a yeah. radius. If, here's my home address. Yes. I want anything within five miles. That's of my right. Address. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Can I Good. say that again? A radius, you got it. radius of an address. Radius of an address. Okay. Yeah. Great. That's good. That's good. good. Um, <laughs> oh, anything else? Um, so that's so. As we're defining our subscription, those are all really good ideas. I, like that. I um, can't say that we can do it, but it is, it, if you look at the WRD really side, if you look at the WRD side, which is too much into how. But what I'm hearing now is we don't. People won't have a a single preference. So they may want to have two subscriptions. So the area for ground spray, where they want to be notified for ground spray is going to be different mm -hmm. than what they want to be notified for aerial spray. Oh, okay. So, so let's go back, go up, back up, uh, to the top. And, and so the ability to have multiple um, profiles. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, if, is that what you're? That that's what we're getting at. Because okay. you know, maybe if I own a horse, I'm more concerned about an aerial spray bringing my horse in, than a ground spray a mile away. Yeah, but you, if it's ground sprays within a half a mile, you want to know. Yeah. Or but whatever. So yeah. and then you might be interested in certain type of harvest operation. Correct. And but you're not. Interest, you're only interested in those in certain particular areas. So the, the idea of multiple profiles is what they So I, I put it as multiple subscriptions right. areas or accounts. I don't know how we're going to do it. But it's, you're saying, you know, in this area I want to be noted aerial sprays. This area I want to be notified of harvest operations. And, and it's all under the same account, but you can have a subscription one, subscription mm -hmm. two, and, road, and manage those differently. Road right. maintenance. Road maintenance. So you can manage those things differently, mm -hmm. or you can, if it's one area, you can just have a different subscription types of them and define multiple sure. types under the same area. Okay. But you know, for that reason, I mean, even if they had the same area, they might want multiple prescriptions mm -hmm. unless it comes sorted or something like that. Right. Same thing. You know, anyway, go ahead. I think you got that. Yeah. And here's an idea about the fees associated with this. If you do decide that you need to collect fees on this, I think once once you're in the system, that's that's most of your cost is just maintaining the user. So maybe you charge fifty dollars a year to be a subscriber, and you can get anything you want. Right. Right. And again, you know, the ideal thing, like Nina had said earlier, the idea thing is that. There isn't a subscription cost. So again, the, the you know it gets to the real question of what's what are the resources going to be? If we can build it right, perhaps we don't need that. So you know, now my question I asked earlier falls within this: receive a copy I'll, of all documentation, notification, notification of the plans. Okay. So if I want to subscribe to that, what is the cost of that? Is it like ten dollars a month? 
plan or whatever, will, will we be able to see that plan or that safe harbor agreement or, you know, the things that they... Well, Do again, if the, if, the, if the written plan, the, again, going back real quickly with the written plan, if it's waived under the stewardship agreement, right. there should be, that stewardship agreement should be out there in public. Right. And so, and the how, be a link to yeah, and that, right. and if everything's linked to everything else, that's great. Our, currently, we don't even have our, um, I mean, we have them, you know, electronic because they're Word documents, but our stewardship agreements are not linked to anything yet. And we're struggling with that. Right. And but like with this, yeah. But with the waiver, the way I think it's going to be is either there is a written plan or there's not. Right. Throwing, you know, disregarding stewardship agreements for a moment. So if they're so waived, right. yeah, if they're waived, right. then you won't. There won't be a written plan. Right. And, and nothing in an electronic notification process would eliminate the statutory requirement to provide a subscriber with a copy of a written plan. Right. So if there is a written plan, it should be linked right to you. This, right. this, this yeah. is yeah. about yeah. a question. Yeah. This is about a machine, yeah. not a law. So yeah. so if it if you're a subscriber and there's a written plan, you gotta get one. Right. Great. I think we captured that. Other documents? Um, besides written plans that you were we were also about that we captured stewardship yeah. agreements. Uh, well, it just says right here, uh, you know, a, a written plan will be, you know, required unless there is a stewardship agreement or any relevant safe harbor agreements or candidate conservation agreements. So I'm just wondering, once there, once we know it's waived, will we have a link or something telling us this is the reason, and then we can yeah. go look at that? Oh yeah. Oh, yes. I mean, if it's okay. waived for oh, okay. for a reason, then we'll get to find out what yeah. reason. So the, the way that could sh show up as a as an issue for you is if you if you entered into the subscription process after the safe after the stewardship agreement was was made. Oh right, I see. What you're saying. So no, we're there's a stewardship down, agreement. But I'm not sure yeah. I yeah. can say yes. Yeah. Right. A, a stewardship okay. agreement. A stewardship yeah. agreement for the next ten <laughs> years in 2000, and then you subscribe in 2001. Right. Yeah, yeah, I switched the same. So, yeah. uh, so it was... Why is it waived? Stewardship agreement? No impact were the two categories we're kind of thinking of now, right? Just yeah. making a side note on that, so when we look at the functionality, we can make a note of that. So, Another thing we were interested in was whether it can also list nearby resource sites. One particular. What kind? Yeah, you see around the map. Oh, okay. It will accept for the confidential ones. And right. yeah. Just to be honest, we we're still working through that. Our spot owl special resource sites are not publicly available. Um, and the, there's a reason for that, it's so that we can get the data to protect them. Right. It, you know, we're given that, subsets of that data is given us to that in confidence. Well, oh, I was thinking also the water resources. Well, the water resources, oh, yeah. Sorry. You mean like uh, stream layer classification, things like that? Yeah. Yeah, that should be accessible just, you know, that. It'll be part of that, but it's also how how we notify the landowner yeah. operator when they're submitting the notification. They receive that same information, so it'll say there's a this is a type F stream, there's a non F stream. And that happens now. Yeah, yeah, it happens today. This current system we have when you draw a polygon again. internally, it actually shows the bar. So what they're saying is then everything, but then it lists what they are. So they're saying they want that, in, besides just being a notification in the map, they would also like to get available resources associated with there. Yeah, and you, that's received today, so. On the maps that you get today, do you have the resources specified on the maps that you get today? There's so Florida drawing maps on the map. They're just listed on the notification. They're just right. listed on the notification. How are you supposed to know what map. that is? Exactly. Right. And so, so I think that, you know, as this will be linked to a map, yes, with the caveat if they're confidential, 
data, we will not be able to match. Right. That. right. Well, I think this has been a good one. Um, have we gotten through? No, uh, uh, you uh, will be able to formally comment a written plan right. or notification. So, oh, yeah, you can know, take my comments into account. So, when there's a comment, you make a comment, it'll notify the search of Forrester and they will review that comment. And, and we'll have access it. to the state Forester's comments on operation? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the idea. And uh, be notified when a 15. Uh, a notification of day waiting period has been waived, so you can comment on that as well. And will there be a reason why that was waived also? Um, typically, yeah, if there's a Forrester comment. You, and the, usually what they say is, <laughs> today, you are you are free to operate as long as you are not within the RMA, when you're defeated the RMA, blah, 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 and then um, you can get started, and then if you, once you, you know, once the 15 days is up, you can go into the management area if you have a written plan. And now we can't weigh those on aerial applications, right. by the way. That's you know that. Yeah. That's the yeah. policy. Is the and I would think, I think the practice today is that if call thinks that, or in the, in the past, when call thought that there would be a concerned neighbor, then he would not weigh the 15 days. And I, you know, I, I, I find that an area that I'm struggling with in some ways that I would like us to be pretty standardized in that, you know, that we should only be waiting the ones with no protected resources. It should be more standard mm -hmm. rather than judgment calls. There are well, we, a we, few, more than a few search reports that believe we shouldn't wait any of them. Yeah, and so it's that's just way too much more, that's more as we go down our business analysis and look at our processes, that will be one that we will get to and say, is this an efficient process? You know, the operator just gets your shit together and notify in time. Well, <laughs> you know, the argument isn't that. That has occurred to us. <laughs> that has occurred to us, but yeah. the argument that we, we get back is that there's a spike in the market price on a family forest land right. order. They've just hit $400, a thousand for Doug Fur. If I can get out there in the next couple of days, I can deliver to that mill. And there's no guarantee that prices, you know, so give, give them a whether that's a real concern, that's no, it's the truth. They give them a purchase order for two weeks. This price is good for two weeks. Right. And we got a 15 day waiting period. Right. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you six fifty a thousand for the next two weeks. And then this guy, wouldn't, he's been waiting to go logging to, you know, he's, he knows he's got the timber. The price has been, Crappy. He's watching the market every two weeks, and then now he gets a purchase order for two weeks, and he's got to wait 15 days for the he, state guy to go. To, say, right? why, why doesn't he just notify in January and say it's for the whole well, year, like the, like some, some of them do? Well, some, some of them do. Don't but, don't but, want to you know, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you want all of our notifications to be open-ended, and we get that from some people that just say, I'm going to notify for everything on my property at the beginning of the year. I'm going yeah. to spray, just I'm going to yeah. harvest. Just I've seen those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might just want it. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, what is the thought that has me is how many times this unit has been notified for a spray? Or like the history of it. So I own timber, and I I, re, I see the notification in 09, 10, 2013. You know, it has to see the. Well, see the now history. this is where we get slightly more complicated than Integrated Water Resources Department, where things aren't subject to time. So we're going to have seven years of, da of rolling data in this database based on. Uh, rural retentions are slightly larger, longer because of our reforestation free to grow checks. So this database isn't going to be only real time. For us, we have to maintain it for uh, you know some length of time till we can close out the final free to grow. So you know the question now, um, which is not covered in the subscription notice at all is can I run a query to find out what the history on this particular piece of land is. Now I believe that we ha have been making, historically we've been making our whole notification 
the database available to the public, I believe we're still doing that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that I'm not going to say, yeah, this user system I can go back and do queries on. I, I, I mean, I think that's going to be yeah, out of scope. Mm -hmm. But the commitment to, you know, we've been, and there's no requirement that we do this. For a long time, we've made that whole database available as a database on a regular basis. And that would should provide the ability to do those kind of information queries. Yeah, we should keep, ideally, the database is still be available. The raw data. And, and so I think uh, I'm hoping that will. Be the, I think that's probably. Well, it could be. A, a, when was this unit last spray? And they just. Put it in. Well, that that's not part of the notification process. Well, no, and I'm just saying that um, you can probably look at the historical notifications of on a piece of property. Mm -hmm. So you can look at all the different types of notifications. You you can see the details. But you there. and the thing I'm saying is that that's. A little bit is different than the subscriber system to be notified for what's coming up. And I think right now we have been providing that capability through providing the database, and I think people have done those queries on that database. Yeah. So we're, I, we're not talking about taking anything away. So we'll continue to provide. Because uh, looking at historical too. notifications yeah. on a piece of property is something we use internally. What, mm -hmm. what was there, and even when it comes down to doing citation investigation, we need to look back right. and see what happened. Because it could be several years later before you know, something happens, and then we need to look back and see who the operator was and who's liable. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, um, right so that's... Part of the information goes back to the age, you know? Yeah, and, and okay. through the Department of Justice, we've been told seven years after the close of the notification, it's purged. Is our record I, retention? Yeah, record purged. retention is seven years, so we can't keep mm -hmm. it beyond seven years. I well, don't know the reason for it. Um, how about once the operation has been completed, will there be a way to go back in the data set and say, this operation was, spray was applied between July 1st and July 3rd. Operation done. Okay. So we go back? Uh, I mean, that would. That's coming from the actual operator, that, yes. that communication. And there's the ability, what we've asked for is the ability of telling us when it's active and when it's no longer active. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you if it, 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 it well, you can see, you probably, you can probably see when it was active and when it was no longer active, when it was marked. Uh, but I couldn't tell you if it was actually said what we did. They're not going to volunteer that information. Well, unless you, they do it sometimes where they communicate directly with their neighbors about that. You know, I, that's a policy change. That's going to require a policy change. You know, I've been, I met with Aaron and Bobby, and we're, I'm going to send out a dutiful now that I got your emails to set up another meeting to follow up with those sort of policy questions about reporting actual use. Yeah. You know, because the system, <laughs> this is a notification system, not an actual use system. We have a pesticide use reporting system that's underfunded and that's run by ag. And so I would assume, and maybe I'm wrong, but I would assume that we would, you're, you're interested in all pesticide use, not just forest pesticide use in your area. We're just talking about forestry today. Yeah. Forestry, yeah. But the, the question becomes is how do we approach that if we're wanting a pesticide use reporting system, do we want you to have three separate systems, one for Add one for forestry, one for urban. We don't get any urban information. So, just this is right now. This is out of scope because we don't currently require that information. So, I, we are committed to following up with that policy discussion about the policy changes you would like to see to the Forest Practice mm -hmm. Act and what are the right venues for that. Is that working on reviving your first system? Not, and not that I'm aware of um, that because uh, it was defunded by the legislature and I, you know, I haven't seen the, uh, their agency request budget but my understanding is it doesn't have the PERS funding in it. Um, yeah, 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 of course. But, but I, was, I really don't want to get into yeah. that. It's simply that active versus inactive that might have a 
try to get the window of time that the operation occurred. I think that that helped with, um, no, say, someone filed for a loss of uh, crop. Well, if there, if, if they did that, if there's a file uh, for loss of crop, yeah, then, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. I will send a doodle to the right. three of you. Right. Thank you. I think it would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Somehow I ended up with this notification and someone's asking me about it. I'd like to type in the notification number and have it shown on my where that is. Okay. That yeah. is. And I think that's what that, that statewide, uh, right. statewide access thing, right? Statewide do you have a, do you, is it written down, what your suggestions are? Um, uh, well, yeah, we have some. We have I think we have covered it. They're not very concise. You know, if you guys think of things later, contact, contact, yeah. contact uh, yeah, Jim. Yeah, I'll send out my email okay. address. Good. And I'll get it. I'll get this from you, and then you maybe give you a call yeah, and ask you what what your thoughts are. Oh, that'd be and good. then I'll document it, and then we can have a, another discussion. Okay. Yeah, I think right here. we had captured many of the things that we don't have on that sheet. We actually. Thank you You're welcome. <laughs> we haven't we met before. Peter, so that, that, um, right. we've we had it. Uh, oh, the citizen thing down in. Yeah. I, I guess I can envision that some point we're going to have to ask you about the history of the notification system. So, um, yeah. so revenue still we'll uses we'll the notification we'll system. Yes. Yeah, they do. Um, so we haven't we'll talked to them yet. It's been three months. They won't update okay. the Because it's almost so we pretty much probably meeting two, three times a week talking about what's working, what's not working. The thing that Bob and Gary are going through a little fast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, okay. Yeah. But, you know, if I can get a volunteer that can work for me for a few more than six weeks, um, can really kind of I think hammer it, on this I think and tell us no, exactly what I have it is and in, in, in how right, they want but, it to work. So um, we, what would we do? A lot of this is we, we give the developers we this idea and, idea and say, say go what? develop your you creative know, type. Then come back so with an idea. A lot of times they come back with something better than we ever thought. Being constrained by the old paper method versus what's capable now. Choose. It's done this before. And they have a best purpose of that. And a business practice. If somebody does a harvest, they get notified that there's a harvest. And then they can send that person the harvest is above a certain amount over $200 of tax of the harvest, which is about $50,000. They can send out a reminder that they need to file this harvest tax information. With Weyerhaeuser or any of the big companies, they send a report on the quarterly basis what the harvest is. And I don't know if it's in this cost yet. You nailed it. It, it, used it to be What we designed was very much similar to what was on the paper just Bills because were I started in February record on a totally different project and then Chuck Aylworth was the new gentleman announced and in June they have that he was retiring December 31st mm -hmm. and we had between June and December 31st to get something well, built. Um, and just out of pure nice survival of getting mm -hmm. something out there at the time, for our we just went with basic. Well. Yeah, and yeah. that's what we had. We, we did that. So, uh, now so we have an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. This, is yeah. this is the right way to do this. Yeah. Right. Take your time. Uh, yeah. flat rate for yeah. Yeah. I don't think you're talking about the time frame, but once we, you know, kind of get your user stories put together, they go into the request for proposal. That has us to review a DOJ. So it, it's been funny to watch this process. For a, somebody to bid on it. Uh, We're hoping between all those processes, the, we can actually have uh, an actual somebody who is going to, to build this for us in place by December. Into December. Into December. So, so, so that the work can start first. Uh, okay. so, the, and then hopefully it'll come through really quick because we've done a job. What they'll do is they'll do kind of look at all the user stories. Right. What I call use cases. Yeah. Although I will do this process, then this triggers another process. So it's kind of breaking things out. And 
uh, we to go review those, but they'll actually have the training sessions as well and have bring, they uh, but the bring training and bring in more time. And then they will prioritize and say what they, they will come back to us with yeah, recommendations. Of, let's build this first, this is the core, and then we'll start building small parts of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're excited. I am. And it seems like it's taken a long time to hold together, but Joe is one man who's been training the entire state on a new business process and in his spare time trying to do this. So you can find out who our research support you want, if you want to look at a really good thing of Washington Department of Revenue, or Department of Natural Resources, they did their systems phenomenal, but they, they spent $4 million and failed miserably, and then had to rebuild it, and this is what they came up with, and then it arrived the second time. And that's a good lesson, it's not to do it right the first time, and that's why we're spending so much up front trying, trying to get what people want out of it. You, may I say, I think you all are being very creative about yes. this. Yes. I, I, yeah. you know, I, I really appreciate that. Okay. that the process. Well, I appreciate your time. This yeah. is important to us to make sure we get it right. <laughs>